welcome host of Travel Channel's Nightcrawl New York, John Murray, from Oxygen's Funny Girls, which you can see Tuesdays at 11 p.m., Yamanika Saunders, CNN legal analyst Sonny Halston, and you know him from Celebrity Apprentice, Grammy-winning rapper Lil Jon. <laughs> This little John being part of this panel? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's have some fun. It's Friday. Right. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Let's face it, no one wants to think about our parents doing it. Ugh. Once you hear this story, you're going to feel for pop star Robin Thicke because, in an interview with Us Weekly, his dad, Alan Thicke, and his wife of 10 years revealed that they like to get busy in the bedroom with Robin's music playing in the background. Eek, I just saw this man go, eek. His wife, Robin Thicke's stepmom, said, when we do get freaky, we love Robin's song, Sex Therapy. You have to admit, it's a great song to get in the mood. Ah, ah. Yamanika. Listen, his father's like 70-something years old. Anything that would get him going, play it all. I don't care who played the song. But it's your son. I don't know. Everybody, I think everybody has a little, you know, tape that they listen to. I know my husband has one. It's called Drop the Drawers. And so... <laughs> it is called Drop the Drawers. Wait, does he play it on? He... Well, sometimes when I get home late at night, I don't know who's in the house, what's going on, and then I hear the music coming downstairs, and I'm like, oh, it's Drop the Drawers time. <laughs> I just, I can't imagine having my son's music on the Drop the Drawers CD. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, like, I, I want to think about my dad, like, playing bingo and walking the dog. <laughs> like, I don't want to think about my dad doing a doggy style to my own music. Like, that's gross. It's, what about you? It's, it's, it's creepy. It, I mean, it, it gives you a whole new meaning to the Robin Thicke song, Blurred Lines. Dad has it's just blurred, blurred the lines. Line. Yeah, yeah. 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 As a father, though, yes. let me tell Good you. <laughs> When it's just like when you hear your son lost his virginity, you're upset, but you're like, yes. <laughs> like, he's a man now. He's growing up. So it's like, he could get down to his son's song. He's like, I created him. Mm -hmm. You know, like, now let's make some more babies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. I agree. All right. Some good news for dog lovers, at least in New York. A new bill that just passed by the New York Senate. State Senate would allow dogs to accompany their owners in outside dining areas. Getting a little bit of applause, all right? The bill has been sent to the assembly for a vote, so my dog Jasper could be dining right next to you. Very no, he soon. can't. Uh -uh. Yes, yes, he can if the law. Uh, hold on, hold on. No, no, he's cute. Meredith, he's cute. Don't make me. First of all, Peter, I apologize to everybody else. I have two beautiful cats, Forbes Magazine and Brooklyn. Mommy loves you. But y'all can't eat with me, okay? Be yeah. Because it's too much. Understand, not everybody loves animals. And they can't be around something that's fed in and doing all this business and stuff and trying to eat. It's just gross. Have I you just, seen the yeah. people who eat with their mouths open? That's gross. <laughs> but I don't, I'd rather I, have a dog next to me. You know, I got to agree with you. I have three dogs. Love my dogs. I, I don't know that I want them slobbering and eating right next to me, especially because I think when people think about this law, they're thinking about little cockapoos and little cutie pies. People are going to start bringing their mastiffs. They're going to start bringing their great danes. They're going to start bringing these big dogs, and then they're going to be slobbering right next to you. They're going to be yeah. big, nasty dogs. Go ahead, John. Yeah. It's, it's, it's three on one, because I don't want your dog. I don't want your cat. I don't want your lions, tigers, or bears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are yeah. 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 In the Watch out, because they're coming. The only animal that should be at the restaurant is the one that the chef prepared in the back, and it's sitting in front of me oh, on the table. Yeah. Absolutely. But, Lil John, what do you think? You eating cats? <laughs> <laughs> I have a big dog, and when I'm trying to eat, I'm trying to eat. Like, he got to be in the other room. Like, he's like the sloppy slob down his face. It's the big dog. So, it's like, dog. I don't want to be eating and somebody's dog just shakes and is slob on my plate now. So, let's keep the dog somewhere else while we're eating. Well, yeah. Listen. No. But the first, the, the yappy dog, a, a yappy dog would bother time me. Somebody gets mad at their waiter and sticks their dog on them. <laughs> Here's a tip yeah. for you, Ralph. You know, no, it's not going to go well. Well, I, I predict it's going to pass. So, good luck, yeah. kids. <laughs> <laughs>
it's, it's a big thing in Paris. You've been to Paris? It is, they, it they, is a yeah. big thing, and I was uncomfortable with it. I was like, why are all these dogs here? I mean, dogs have fleas. They have all this stuff going on. I just... And, you know, people love their dogs. I love my dogs, but I also don't kiss my dogs in the mouth. Okay. A lot of people let their dogs oh, well, lick them in the... I kiss my cats. I, let them I don't do them. that. And I don't like that. But I'm also the cuisine single. mixed up. He mixes up your food <laughs> with the dog food. And it, no, it's all like right, the episode of Good Times. Right. It got weird. All right, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> when if Paltrow has had her share of criticism, remember the flack that she drew last year for using the term conscious uncoupling to describe her divorce with Coldplay's Chris Martin. And then there was negative press after she said that moms who work nine to five has it easier. Well, now her mom, Blythe Danner, has come to her daughter's defense, saying in a Today Show interview, I think she's so accomplished that people get intimidated by it. And she also referred to her daughter as an incredible mom, among other things. So why are you going all oh, like that? I love that a mom comes well, to her she, child's I mean, You know, she is an incredible mom, but I think Gwyneth Paltrow's problem is she needs street, street credibility. Now, there are a few years ago when uh, people were saying that Wayne Brady was too corny. So he went on the Dave Chappelle show and turned all the way up, and they were like, oh, Dave, uh, Wayne Brady's cool now. I think Gwyneth Paltrow should drop into an episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> I, I, I think that she should get a grill like Little John has. <laughs> She's divorced now. She should date Drake, and then Little John should put her on a party record, and she can turn <laughs> down for what? I don't... I, you know, I... I, I love... That Gwyneth, I, I think I think people hate on Gwyneth Paltrow. I think that she has been really enterprising with um, being a vegan, with clean eating, clean living. I think that it's about time that her mother stuck up well, for her. Because no, if somebody anything, comes for mine, no, I'm going mean, after yeah, that. Uh -oh. I mean, realistically, she just came you're going to go after whoever attacks your child. So I get That's why right. her mother did that. But it's really, and this is no shade against Gwyneth. Gwyneth already has street credit because she's friends with Beyonce and Jay-Z. It's the things that she <laughs> says out of her mouth that what is just like, you, it's just the way she's, she's oblivious and she's out of touch. So if you're a real human being listening to the things that are coming out of her mouth, of course you're going to have a problem with it because it's like, girl, you're not living in the real world. Get it together. I don't know. There, I'm I don't sorry. agree. Yamanika, I have to disagree with you, though. There's no street credibility when your site is called Goop. Who comes up with a name called Goop? There's nothing cool or hip about like, Goop. What is this thing Everybody's hating on credibility. Her. I don't have street. What street Mer credibility? Oh, you got street credit. You know, Meredith, yeah, yeah. Us, Meredith yeah. was making it rain and drinking champagne yeah. with Florida. You have oh, street yeah. That's true. Is that what it is? That's it. You know, if I were to... If I... My kids are in their 20s now, but when they were little and something would happen, like a kid would be mean to them, and I would want to go either call out the kid or talk to the parents, my kids always were, Mom, stay out of it. Mm -hmm. They would not have yeah. liked me to get involved, yeah. My kids this, enjoy it. Really? They know. Don't come for my kids. I'm going to show up. Oh. Yeah. So I'm going to show up. I, I'm just surprised it took us so long. Always per let's, listen, let's be honest. My children the are kid, perfect. Of course, to you. <laughs> to you. But just like I don't want the dogs at the, at the table when I'm eating, I don't want the kids around either, because I didn't birth them. OK? We have to be realistic about our children. You have to be realistic about your children. Sometimes children can be jerks, OK? We my pacify heart. them a little bit too much. OK? I definitely don't want to meet your kids. I'm, just show me photos of them. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Listen, how far were you have a son? Right? Yep. So how far would you go to protect your son? Uh, Defend him. You do everything for your children. I yeah. mean, they are our world, you know. Yeah. So I, I totally agree with you. Like you I, I don't have a problem with her standing up for her daughter. Even though her daughter may say some crazy stuff. We all do. <laughs> but you stand up for your children. All right. Finally, before we go to break, there are some stories that just touch your heart because they're beautiful stories. A deputy police officer in Colorado lost his life in a shootout in 2010, and his patrol car just went up for auction this week. The proceeds to go to a charity that benefits the families of fallen officers. There was a man named Steve Wells in the audience, and he actually was bidding against the officer's son. And he outbid the officer's son with a bid of $60,000. And he, was, he got the car, and after accepting the car, he turned to the son of the cop, whose father's patrol car he had just won, and he handed that boy the keys. And I thought that was really incredible. I mean, I, it actually brings tears to my eyes because, you know, we see so much of the worst in humanity oftentimes, and it's highlighted, and we see it all over the news, and we talk about it. We need to talk about things like that more because there really are great people in our society. Yeah. There really are. So Steve Wells,
Charles, we salute you. You're one of those great guys. Don't go anywhere. We have much more after this. Oh, I don't, <laughs> unfortunately, it's a short.